Hey everyone and welcome to Haste Kitchen Now today. I'm joined in the kitchen with my wife, Nicola. Hello. She's not been on the channel before and basically what I want to try and do today was do something like a family classic. So there's three things that I usually have. When I'm coming away from work and I've been away for the night, I've got three options usually to come home. One would be takeaway. I don't do takeaway. Yes, you do. I order it. No, actually I wait till you get home and say you order it. It would be a chicken kebab, wouldn't it? Uh, two would be uh, lasagna, which is epic by the way, she does do a good lasagna. And three, my absolute favourite, is the cottage pie with a sweet potato topping. So I actually make bolognese well as well. But they're all mince based, what's that about? It's mainly mince diet. So the reason I've got Nick on the channel is, is basically, every time I come home to this meal, I say, right, well, I'm going to recreate this and do this as a fresh recipe, or put my own little twist on it. And I thought to myself, there's no point. It's it is epic recipe. So I thought, get Nick on the channel, she can get cooking it. Um, there's a bit of family input there. And it also shows that you can do this for something like, um, um, if you're a, if you're a parent that's got a couple of kids at home, a typical 2.4 family, you can have this three nights in a row, or you can batch cook it and freeze it. This will give you a three batch meal for four people. And I try to put everything in it so I don't have to make any side dishes. That's it. Well, we have a side of kale sometimes, don't we? Yeah, but so for the kids, it. it has the peas and the sweet corn in so that I don't have to make something else. Okay, so first we need a pan. We're going to put that up to medium heat. Now, I don't normally use any oils or anything with it because the fat from the beef should help cook it anyway. If you're looking at a minced beef, you're looking at between 5 and 10% fat ratio. Don't go for hardly any fat because it will be dry as anything and have hardly any flavour. Okay, Can you so do I'll the onion, them. please? Because I don't like that bit anyway. My onions are never cut as well as yours and it takes me a really long time. <laughs> this is the piece I usually say, tell me more about your channel. However, Nick's one half of Pixie Wee, which is probably one of the most successful makeup channels in the world. Um, so there's no point me guiding you across there, really, unless you're a female and love makeup, then definitely go and look at that. Yeah, it's good. We teach how to do makeup. We've got a book out, go buy it, it's called Face, and a documentary, which is amazing. Oh, plug in everything. Oh, while I'm here. <laughs> yeah, for your wives, buy them the makeup book. There's also a documentary out, which is all in the link in the description box below. I'm um, going to check it out. It's pretty Hang awesome. on, there might be some guys that wear makeup that are watching this that might want to That's as well. True. Come on, back, yeah, right take away. it back. Don't discriminate. If there's any pets as well that like makeup, <laughs> just buy it for anyone for Christmas. What you didn't know about Nick is that she's actually got four Michelins. <laughs> On your what tyres? <laughs> oh, I thought you went on my belly. No. <laughs> How come you're keeping the end on that? I'm keeping the end on it because that's the bleeder. Oh, it makes your eyes water. Yeah. So that little bit there, basically, if you cut into that, it bleeds. In your own time, but I'm ready for the onion. Can you say yes, chef? Yes, chef. <laughs> Thank you all. Okay, then we want two garlic cloves. Strong garlic, isn't it? Is it? I love garlic. Ooh, you're smelling good today. Pepper. It's fine. Yeah. Salt. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, I don't need much. So we're cooking that for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's rendered down completely. Then we're going to go in with... Next, I'm going to go in with some um, chopped tomatoes and tomato puree. And I'm going to use... Now, this is really difficult for me because I'm actually having to say how much I'm using. So important. So I'm going to go in with four tablespoons to start off with and give it a mix and see what colour it goes. Ingredients list will be in the description box below, just in case we adapt this in some way. Because as, this, as I say, this recipe is in here. Not There's in not here much today. in there. There's not much in there. Oh God, I lost count of how many I just put That's in then. Great. Okay, eight. Um, next, I want to put some... Actually, I'm going to go in with McGuinness. McGuinness? McGuinness. If you don't know what McGuinness is... Guinness. It's an Irish drink. If you can't find that, <laughs> where are you living, first of all? Oh, that's nice. This is only for our family, so it doesn't matter that my germs go in it. Absolutely fine. I'm going to put half a pint in of Guinness. So that's your secret ingredient? No, not yet. Really? It's one of them. Usually, um, usually you use the red wine in this. Yeah, but I think... It's sometimes a bit too rich with red wine. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I just like... Now I know what you're going to put with that if you're using beer. No, you don't. Yeah, you're going to be using Marmite. Or How do you know that? Because this is what you do on the sand to make it strong. Yeah, needs it. It brings out the flavours. If you don't know about that, it's like adding dark chocolate to a chilli. It's that last little twist of flavour that really sort of gives it that last little kick. Now, a little bit of um, Bovril or what's the one in Australia? 
Vegemite. Vegemite or Marmite, any of those, just like a teaspoon will kick in so much extra flavour and it works really well with things like beer. Yeah, now we've got a little bit of juice in there, I'm going to add the carrots. So you could take about three to four large carrots, take off the ends and then cut these into sections about two to three centimetres long. I'm going to add them to the pan and let that simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm just going to add the rest of the blended tomatoes because I can see that we've got a lot of um, mints and carrots here that I can add a little bit more liquid to it and it'll be fine. Okay, I feel like a bit of a spare part now. What can I get on with? Oh, can you do the, can you peel the um, sweet potato? Oh, that's heavy. Oh man, can we get any smaller sweet potatoes? Um, right, can I do these in a different way? Yeah. Right. Rather than peeling all of those and then chopping them up and then boiling them, I'm just going to stick them in the oven for 20 minutes at 180 Celsius until the skins fall off and that we push the insides out and we've got our mashed potato. Oh. That's why I don't cook very often. I do cook other things though. I cook like cheesy pasta. Yes. It's not really cooking, really is it? Cooking, I cook I like I like carbonari kind of things and you don't, so that's why I don't cook. Carbonara is the most bland thing in the world. I really like it's it. It's like risotto. I like risotto. Really? Yeah, I have to have a side of veg or something, but I like risotto. I've been married to you for six years. I've never seen you eat a risotto once. Oh, that's because you don't cook it. I don't cook it. <laughs> it has to be. You've never ordered it in any restaurant ever. Though. No, because they've always got like scampi and chips on the menu. Oh. Fish and chips, pie and mash. All the bad stuff. All the hearty stuff that I will choose way, way over, over that. So really, in a nutshell then, you actually not that bothered by it, I? Well, I would eat it if it was put in front of me. I always think the mushroom risotto is put on the menu for... Vegetarian. Rubbish vegetarian options. So if you're a vegetarian, this is definitely five years ago. It's changed a lot in the last five years, isn't it? But usually when you went into a restaurant, if you were with vegetarians, they'd have to have the mushroom risotto. And I'd always think to myself, yeah, I think mushroom risotto is quite nice because you can have a side of veg with it or something. It's just boring. That's why you don't like it. You like other stuff. Boring and if you think about it from a vegetarian's point of view... A vegetarian? Yeah, they're the new ones. They only eat pears. <laughs> um, so if you think about it from a vegetarian's point of view, if they only eat vegetarian and the only choice they have on the menu is mushroom risotto, that means every time they eat out they have to have mushroom risotto. That would suck, wouldn't it? Coming out for a meal tonight. Oh yeah, where are you going? Oh, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because you can have mushroom risotto. That's true, but it's not, it's not like that anymore. No, it has changed. While that's simmering away, we're going to add two large tablespoons of Worcester sauce. Give that a good stir around, then add in around 650 to 750 millilitres of really good quality beef stock. Once you've done that, we're going to add our secret ingredient, which is the Marmite. We're adding about one and a half teaspoons. So we're back after 10 minutes and it's got nice and nice and thick and a lovely colour. Tastes amazing. It's Absolutely lovely. amazing. Now I don't usually get involved at this point because usually I'm away when you're cooking it and I'm never allowed to taste it when I come in the kitchen. So it's um, quite nice to see it being made. What's, what's going in there you now? Know all my tricks. And how much I obviously love you to have put so much care into making your dinner. You do make this at least five times a year so there's a lot of love there. <laughs> I'm then going to add my peas. So you're gonna add 200 grams of frozen peas and around 200 grams of sweet corn. You're gonna let that simmer away for about another five to 10 minutes while we get the potatoes out of the oven and then we're gonna start de-skinning them. Once de-skinned, you're gonna add around 50 to 75 grams of butter to give that a really good mash. Finally, you're gonna add your mixture to an oven safe glass dish. Then we're gonna lightly, with the back of the spoon, apply about a centimetre deep of our sweet potato. We're gonna to top this off with three different types of grated cheese. We've got mozzarella, some gruyere, and a little bit of mature cheddar. So there we go, that is pretty much ready for the oven. That's gonna go in the oven for 20 minutes at around 180 Celsius. Remember, this is cooked too ready, so all you're trying to do is crust off that cheese on top. But then in 15 minutes time, I'm gonna take it out and go in with a little bit of the um, Worcestershire sauce just on top. Like what you do on cheese on toast? Yeah, but it just adds a bit more of the flavour, a bit more of the texture and incorporates the cheese with it a bit better. Nice, see you in 20. 
How good does that look? And I can't even explain how good it smells in here. It is incredible. We just had a delivery and the guy was like, what are you cooking in there? It smells amazing. <laughs> he said, what is that going on in there? What's that? He's just caught his pie back away. Step back away. away from the door. Just carry on with the deliveries. <laughs> there we go. That is Nick's super easy three cheese Guinness and sweet potato cottage pie. You don't get better than that. And it does have some veg in it. There's loads of veg in there. Um, recommended sweat off a little bit of kale with a bit of butter just put on the side and that goes with it perfectly. Now if you do recreate this one, hashtag me at Hayes Kitchen as always. Comment down below if you like the recipe. Give Nick some love and we shall see you soon. Cheers then, bye bye. Bye. Like lava, molten lava. Oh, it's so hot. If you wait for around three days it will cool down <laughs> enough to eat. Lava. Otherwise it is going to take off the top part of your tongue. You going in? Go first because you got yours out first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. See, I don't care, that's the only thing you cook for me. It is that good. <laughs>